Hi dolls, it's me, Miss Katy Perry, and today I'm gonna be hopefully teaching you on how to morph your looks. So, tonight we're gonna learn on how to organize your looks, on how to optimize them, on how to use catalog items on looks, and how to actually use a morpher on three types of looks. Gowns, dresses, and mobile parts. So, why don't we get started? Welcome to the Kind Factory! I have prepared four types of looks, including gowns and a version of my body where all my limbs are visible because there are different ways to morph your looks depending on what type of clothing you are wearing. Let's start by step one, how to organize your looks. Well, as you can see, I'm going to use this look right here as an example. All my parts are like all over the place, nothing is grouped together, and this can make your morphing process way harder than it actually needs to be. What we're gonna do is prepare and organize our looks. So I'm gonna take the top part. So this is the head. We should prepare by head, left and right arm, torso, and the right and left leg. You can do this while building or after your look is done. Either way is correct. There's no wrong way to do it. Really, it's up to your choice. But as long as you keep it organized, it will make your morphing process way easier. So I always recommend on naming groups. So you can click, double click on the model or you can just come right here on the properties tab here at the bottom here on name and change the name of it so head torso left arm but katie this is the right are you dumb no so when we are talking about the limbs we are talking about from the perspective of the player so for me this is my right part of the screen but this is the left arm of the person. So you need to think that you're seeing from this point of view. This is my left, this is my right. So this is the player's left arm and this is the player's right arm. So keep that in mind while you're naming your groups because you can get them mixed up on the morphing process. And let's do the same with the legs. Is the naming process necessary? No. But it does help you keep yourself more organized when morphing. And now I'm going to repeat the same process with all the other looks. Well, actually, let me stop right here. So we ran into some trouble right now. So, Katie, this is a dress. I don't really have legs. Although they are underneath the dress because me, Katie Perry, I like to keep the legs under the dress because I think it adds more detailing, but who cares? But I don't want them to move, Katie, because otherwise they're going to be clipping all over my dress. So what we're going to do, everything like that should stick to the torso, for example, a skirt, a mermaid dress, a cape, um, a train skirt, uh, anything really that, that connects with the torso in some type of way should be in the torso. So, also the neck should be on the torso. Let me make that very clear. <laughs> so, all this is the torso. We're gonna name this all of this part torso. So, there will be no left and right leg group. There will be only torso, right arm, left arm, and head. Same for this look right here. Now let me stop again. Let me show you this version. So this is a mermaid dress, which is kind of similar to this, like it's just a dress, but this is a mermaid version of it. And this is also a mermaid dress, but this is made out of legs. So these are my legs. These are my legs that are exactly here, but they are shifts in a V shape to create the illusion of a mermaid gown. Most gowns in road drag are done like this, 
I was like, no, mashed queens like myself don't have that trouble. We can just mash a gown. But normally you would make your legs into a V and add a skirt at the bottom. So how do I make how do I make this into a into a mermaid skirt morph? Well, the same way we did here. Everything that should be the skirt will be in the torso. So everything here that is quote unquote legs are in the torso because they are not legs in this case. They are a part of the dress. And okay, I have all my four looks grouped together and named correctly. So as you can see here, I have a lot of heads, a lot of torsos, a lot of right arms, a lot of left arms. So they are all these groups right here. But we are not done organizing the look yet. Before we move on to any other step, you need to make sure that your look is anchored, and has its collisions off. And it's the whole thing. It's not only the torso, it's not only the legs, it's not only the arms, it's not only the head. It's the whole thing. The whole look needs to be anchored and have its collisions off. Now that we have our looks organized, let's work on optimizing them. Well, Katie, why do we need to optimize look? Well, let me give you an example. Let me use this look right here because it has more parts to it. As you can see, I have added some light tilling to the bottom. It's pretty messy. These looks were made pretty quickly just for tutorial reasons, but I made some stoning right here and it may not look like much, but it is. So if I come here and select it and unselect the legs and the, the skirt mesh, you're gonna see right here on the properties tab that we have 238 items selected. In my case, 200 items for a morph, it's kind of a lot, but not really depending on the look that you're doing. But you need to think that this is only the bottom part of the skirt. If this was an actual look of mine, there would be way more stoning over here. There would be stoning at the boobs. I would have jewelry. I would have gloves. I would have more accessories in the hair. I would have even more stoning throughout the dress. So those 238 parts can go pretty quickly from 200 to like 800 to 1000 parts in like in the blink of an eye. Especially with the amount of detail that people can add into looks. When we have parts like this, normal parts, like normal Beatles parts, like this one, you can, people on Full Studio do this with their looks. You go, you're gonna select it, and you're gonna come here to Model, Union, and there you go. Now all those 238 parts became one singular part. Crazy to think, isn't it? Very nice. So we just eliminated 237 parts with like three clicks. So union your stoning. You cannot union some parts of the log, for example, you cannot union meshes together. You can only union parts, but you can make your looks more optimal just by uniting your stoning or unioning parts that are able to be unioned together. And to go a step further, we're gonna select all parts of the look, not only groups, we're gonna select all parts of the look. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna come right here to this part. Enable fluidly, fluidly forces. You're gonna deactivate this. You're gonna take the collision. And of course we just turn it off because we, we turned it off with B tools, but make sure it's off. You're gonna take can touch and you're gonna turn it off. And the collision fidelity, do this part only after your look is done. You're gonna change it to box. There we go. What does this option of turning the collision box, the collision fidel fidelity to it, to a box? Well, a Roblox model is made of a lot of vertices. 
As you can see, this is not really a, a square shape. It has round parts to it. It has like bumps. It has like curves. It has like a very small part of it that is actually flat. Well, the collision fidelity makes Roblox calculate your player hitting it. So if I were to take my avatar and walk around this, my avatar would actually touch the, the mesh part as, as realistic as possible. So I would bump my head here maybe and my, the rest of my body would not touch this part or I could bump into this part and this part. So I would be touching every single geometry point. When you change the collision fidelity to a box, so what happens is, instead of my player touching this part realistically, what it's going to do, it's going to touch it as if it were a box. So what Roblox will actually calculate is if the actual mesh was this. Roblox is calculating the collision of it as if it this. This is this is the mesh on the collision map right now. Instead of being this, this is the collision right now for the leg. So it's way less vertices for Roblox to calculate while you have your morph on. So that's an amazing thing. So always make sure to check this box every time you have your look done. So, collision fidelity, box. And now, for small details, you can take the cast shadows part and turn it off. For example, tiny stones don't need to really emit light, emit shadows, so you can turn them off. Wigs, I, would, I will say that this varies, but this wig in particular does not look great with shadows on, so I always keep them off. Ears, I think it's such a small detail that I really don't think that the shadows should be on, so I keep them off. But with big parts of the body, I would say it's worth keeping them on. Right now my graphics on Studio are low, but the shadows is what appears on the grounds around your player, of course. But if they are off, those shadows will not appear. So sometimes it can make your shadow look kind of wonky. If you're a person that likes a lot of detail like I do, you will go like to just only necessary parts and turn only those necessary parts shaggles off. But you're gonna keep the body on, so at least on your shaggle you're gonna look cute as well. But if you really want to go nuts with it and make your look the more optimal as possible, turn all shaggles off. Double-sided. Double-sided means that the mesh is double-sided. This will depend on the mesh you're using. This, I don't really see a difference on performance. I can only see it making your look worse because it changes the appearance of a mesh. So, I wouldn't touch this. This doesn't really make a change. But yeah, always keep your shaggles off when you can. Always turn your enable fluid forces off. Always turn can collide off and can touch and make your collision fidelity a box in the whole look. And the shaggles are optional, of course. So now I'm going to repeat the same process on every single look. Okay. Now my looks are all optimized on the best way possible. Their shaggles are off, they are all with the collision fidelity on boxes, the collisions are off, the can touches are off, they are all anchored. So they should be in line to be the most optimal that they can. Well, but let's say that you like to wear jewelry to your looks, but you don't really want to add those studio jewelry, jewelry sets because they can be very laggy. A jewelry set in studio can have up to like 500 parts in a single earring. They look gorgeous, but I wouldn't really recommend them for picture lo for films long terms. If I were you, unless if you have a very basic look on, or if you know how to optimize it correctly. But if you would like, you can use catalog items. I separate to these two items right here. I use this plugin right here. By the way, I will be making all plugins that I wear in this video available in the description below, so don't worry. So I'm gonna take this catalog ID that I have prepared here, just to show how the catalog inserter works. 
I'm gonna place the ID here, insert, and there we go. We have the catalog, the catalog ID added into the studio. But with everything comes a price. <laughs> when it comes to using catalog items in looks, you need to do a little bit of more work. I'm gonna show it with these earrings, for example. As you can see, they come in this little hat thing because it's a catalog item, so it's an accessory. So what you should do is you need to take this off, delete that parts. You can delete the part scale, the hack attachments, and the touch interests. You only need the special mesh and the handle. You can Ctrl X this or just cut it or copy it. And then you can paste an original location using your right button or uh, using Ctrl V. So right now we removed all the unnecessary things that would make this part unmorphable. Because the touch interest part would make if your player touches this item, it will equip it to their body. So that's not great. And these parts make the look unmorphable. So make sure to delete those. I'm gonna make this as well for this necklace. So again, delete the thumbnail configuration. Avatar, necklace, touch interests. I'm only gonna keep the handle and delete this hat. And there you go. Again, the items need to all be anchored, have their collisions off, shadows off if you want, can collide and can touch, and that's it. Since they are a special mesh, they don't have the collision fidelity. They are already set as a box, so don't worry about it. So now this I these items right here can be morphed. So you can you can get them here and put them in your look. There we go. So I'm now going to put the, the items on their respective groups. So the necklace should go in the head. I mean, the earrings should go in the head and the necklace should go on the torso. By the way, I know their names handle. You can rename them, don't worry about it. Feel free to rename them if you would like. I don't because I'm lazy, but if you would like to, you can rename them. So, let's move on to the exciting part, which is actually morphing the looks. So, now that we have organized them and make them as optimal as we can, we can morph them on their respective ways. So, let me start with this type of body right here. We're gonna be using an ADR morpher. Who created this? I don't know. I assume that they were aliens because I could not tell you, but at the same time, I'm thankful it's here. An ADA Morpher has this transparent part which represents an R6 player size. So this is only a reference for you. You shouldn't be taking this as a copying paste. So your arm shouldn't be disconnected from your actual torso. Your head shouldn't be inside of your your neck, no, no, don't worry about it. This is just a guide. So let me start with this look right here. I'm gonna take Q and we're gonna move it over. We're gonna take the, the model resize plugin. To make it more smooth, toggle the GY, change the handle steps to 0.001, the percent part to 100, and there we go. You can just resize it as smooth as possible. This is the part that some people kind of get messed up sometimes. Sometimes people make themselves really tall for no reason or really tiny for no reason, but you should be using this transparent this transparent mannequin as faithfully as possible. So for example, I'm gonna light myself, not perfectly with the middle, but as close to the middle as I can get. And as you can see, my chin is very far away from the chin of the actual avatar. So this means that I'm actually way too tall. So I'm gonna take my model resize and size it down. 
Mm, I can be a teeny weeny weeny toilet. There we go. My arms also kind of line up with the mannequin. So does kind of my torso, as you can see right here. The, the mannequin's legs end right here, and here's where my torso, my torso starts. So it's really practice. It's really watching and making sure you, you are the right size. But I am indeed uncentered, so I can use the legs right here, this middle gap right here, to center my legs and center it overall. This doesn't have to be perfect, by the way. You, you can make this as crazy as you want, but you will be looking wonky when you walk around, so it's good to have a close call on it. Now that we have it, we're going to do a Ctrl X, select the rig, go to this little cog thing, make everything transparent, and turn the transparency of the button to zero again. Is this step necessary? No, but it, it is more aesthetically pleasing nevertheless. So here in the head, we're going to right click and paste an original location. There we go. We are not fully morphed though. Here on the head, we're only going to keep the head group. So torso, control X, select the torso of the ADR morpher. So ADR morpher, torso, paste the collision location. Right leg into the right leg. Right arm into the right arm. Left leg into the left leg group. and left arm into the left arm group. That's why I was very, very, very insistent on making you name your groups. This makes this process way more easier because it's just a game of matching what you're doing. So whatever you want to go on the torso needs to be on the torso group from the morpher. Whatever you want to be on the right leg and right arm it just needs to be inside of this group of the morpher. Although we have the weld tube part right here, you don't weld anything. Just ignore this. This is the mannequin part that we were talking about. So don't worry about it. You don't need to weld anything when it comes to morph. Okay, so let me choose one of the gowns to morph. By the way, all three of these gowns would morph in the same way because they are all a quote-unquote mermaid dress. So the torso goes to the torso and we have no leg groups. So it's basically the same process as this one, we just don't put anything on the legs. And if you were to have like a waist skirt, you would also put it on the torso. Most skirts go on the torso, you, would ba you will barely put anything on the legs, so be aware of that. If you want something to stick to the legs, feel free to. But I would recommend putting all types of skirts on your torso. So let me take this gown right here and bring it over so we can morph it and test it out. I will be repeating all the process, so I'm scaling it down. I'm lining myself up with the mannequin and now I'm cutting the look, making the morpher transparent and making only the button visible. Coming here to the head, pasting into the original location, and doing the whole process. So, torso, into the torso, paste at the original location. Right arm, into right arm, paste at the original location. Left arm, at left arm, paste at the original location. And the head is a rag in the head. So, there you go. This look is a rag morph. Morph is as simple as that. It's just matching groups. There's really nothing bigger to it than that. It's just that sometimes people forget to make sure that the morphs are anchored and have their collisions off. The buttons have collisions, but they don't matter. But if you want to be sure that everything's correct, make sure everything is anchored, make sure everything's off, just so you prevent a problem. So let's go test out. Let's go out and test the other morph. And well, here we are again. This look we already tested, and it works just fine. And here we go. Here's our next look. And as you can see, it works just fine. Of course, I cannot really show it really well to you because I don't have admin in here, but, and I'm really lazy, lazy to get it, but you get the gist. And well, this is really all you need to know about morphine. There is nothing more to it than this. 
Um, I recommend watching the video calmly and, you know, stop, do it on your look, try it again. It's okay to get it wrong the first time. Everyone does it. It's fine. Morphine sometimes, it's really easy, but sometimes you can go like on autopilot and when you test out the morph, you're going to notice like the dumbest mistake of all time. Which is okay, we are humans, we are allowed to make mistakes. Again, all plugins that I used in this video will be on the description below, together with my Twitter and my other social medias. And yeah, I hope you all have a fun time morphing and that you're able to learn it well from this video. So I hope I helped and I will see you all very soon. Bye queens!